Hello, this is Steve from Beto's Leatherworks. Today's project is this uh, this no-name bag. There's no markings on there of what brand it is or anything else. It just says handmade in Italy, genuine leather. Okay, so let me give you the story on this uh, on this bag. Um, this is going to be about a $500 job. Um, basically, we're going to take it apart, um, remake these side pieces here, put new handle, not new handle, I'll put new lining in, um, clean and die condition, and reattach these J hooks on the sides with smaller eyelets here. Now, I get a lot of um, I get a lot of comments on on the prices I charge, and and some are a little higher than others. Um, it really depends on the job. Okay, um, depends on how many hours I got to put into it. Depends on what a mess it is when it comes to me. Um, it's just majority of the work I do is majority of it is all labor. I'd say maybe ninety percent is labor, ten percent is materials. Now this particular handbag, let me read you a note that the customer sent me. I won't read all of it, just the most important part. Okay, it says, you see, I received this handbag about 20 years ago as a gift from a very special person who has since passed away. I know he spent several hundred dollars on this bag. It has a lot of sentimental value to me and I used it every day until it began to unravel. I took it to several places here in, and I won't mention the state, and left it with one company for several months. They started taking it apart, but then called me to pick it up because they did not have the tools to repair it correctly. So as you can see, somebody's made an attempt, which they kind of made a little mess out of it. So it's a little bit more time consuming for me to clean up that mess and then put the project back on its, you know, where it should be. So therefore at times, it's a little bit of work trying to put pieces of puzzle together to make it look like it was never done. So with that said, um, I think once it gets done, I think um, she'll be very happy with it. And I think it'll last hopefully, hopefully for another 20 years. All right, let's get started. Here goes nothing. Oh, look, my bench is clean. Hey man, why you got such a dirty bench? You clean your bench, you're gonna have more viewers. Whatever. I mean, it's a workbench. It's gonna get dirty. These are just stained, by the way. They don't, doesn't get dirty. So, they're like, some people are like, I don't want my bag getting dirtier than I sent it in. Really? Really? Cash, I'm missing the whole point of what I do. If you think I'm going to send back something dirty, dirtier, come on now. Oh, lordy, lordy, lord. Ain't the sharpest tool in the shed, are you? So you guys see that this has lots of sentimental value to it. And uh, we're going to bring it back to what it was. Actually, better than what it was. I mean, if you see here, this is paper. Where are you? Right there. Okay. So we're going to replace it with leather, which, which won't, basically won't, you know, when paper over time starts flexing, you know, it just starts breaking down and and um, falling apart. Leather won't do that. Well, most leather, I should say, not all of them. Oh this is all going to be. This is all going to be replaced. We can make it, we can make it work. We can do it. We can do it. All right. All right then. All right, 
That is Disassemble 101. I mean, there wasn't much to it. I guess it was all apart anyway. <laughs> well, it'll look good once it gets done. Don't worry. Don't worry. She's in good hands. She's in good hands. I'm telling you. Let's continue. So notice the, the top of the bag right here. See how it's kind of... I mean, it's going crazy here. It's, it's not... It should be a nice straight line. So what we're going to do, we're going to put a piece right here to reinforce it, to give it that stability and nice structure. So when it's finished, it looks nice and nice and straight and crisp. All right, let's continue. All right, so let me show you guys how we put a pocket lining in. So this is a pocket here we have, right? Okay. Now, the way we do this, we get our material. This is a pocket. See, just like that. If you fold that in half, it becomes a pocket. Okay? And the way we do it first, we stitch the bottom stitch here. Okay? We stitch it just like that. We stitch it across. Put a little bit of glue here just to kind of keep it. Keep this seam right here flat. Okay. Hammer that down. Now we fold this over. Come on, get out of there. Oh. Fold that over just like that. Now you come back and stitch this small piece here and all the way to top seam. Okay? Once you're done, the top and bottom seams are secure of the pocket. Then you come back and you close this right here on the sides. Now, you can close this now if you want. It, it's done either way. You can, you can, do, you can stitch it before you put it on right or you can stitch it after you finish those seams either way as long as the sides are secured then you have a pocket okay now I just noticed something you see how the pocket is so low this is where it folds the, the purse folds right here this is the, the bottom of the purse now it looks like I made the pocket a little bit too long okay so very simply, just lift it up a little bit. Now it's right on, a little shorter than the bottom. That'll sit a little better. So be careful, don't don't make it don't make it too long. You want it to be you want it to be not longer than the purse the, the dimension of the purse itself. Sometimes a little shorter, but depending on the pocket you're making. Don't make it longer, you can make it shorter, but not longer. All right, she's ready to be stitched. All right, let's continue. All right, so now that we've got the bag all apart, we're gonna take a little bit of acetone and clean the surface of the bag. Nothing too harsh, just a little bit light, light rub across the leather surface there. That'll take some of that dirt off. Now you don't want to, we're not really stripping the whole surface for removing the black dye. Okay, we're just going to kind of prep the surface so it can take new, new uh, dye well. And that's about it. We'll let that dry for a little bit and come back and apply a thin coat of black one coat and um, we'll see what it looks like all right let's continue all right so we're making progress uh, let's see what we got here the 
this is one side of the bag. You've got the lining cut, side panel, side gusset, whatever you want to call it, glued together. There's new lining back there too. You notice how the lining, the lines are, are following the pattern, if you can tell or not. So that's the idea. If a, if, a, if a fabric has pattern, you'd like to have it consistent throughout the whole bag, not one is vertical, one is horizontal. Okay. Now what we need to do, we need to cut, let's see, one, two, four pieces, four, I put eight pieces of this right here. These are the side pieces of the of the bag. So what we're going to do is we're going to make new ones and we're going to you we're not going to cut a hole this big. We're going to do a smaller grommet so the J hook doesn't slide out of the loop. Okay. All right, let's continue. All right, so now we have the other side we have to duplicate. So we need to find the center of this pocket. Fold that over like that. And there is the center. No measuring required. So we need to cut a small area here for, for the pocket. Okay. We've already got the center. The opening is seven inches. Approximately an inch and a quarter from the top. Let's say inch and a half. Okay, on the safe side. Okay. So basically now we're gonna mark it on the back of that. Okay. Three and a half being center, seven inches seven inches roughly there okay so what we're going to do now we're going to cut a small piece of this fiberboard now there are a lot of different kinds of fiberboards out there i know sometimes when i open up bags i tell you guys that the fiberboard is all torn up and truly it is it does it does eventually fall apart but there's different different grades of fiberboard some are mixture it's not just paper. It's maybe uh, like a um, some sort of a rubber mixture into it. And this particular one is flexible. This doesn't this doesn't bend. It doesn't break. I mean, it, it bends. It doesn't break. You understand what I'm saying? No. Well, you will. All right. So we're gonna cut it maybe about about an inch, an eight inch, I would say. The opening is about half an inch let's say three-eighths of an inch okay so the center we'll get the centers three quarters of an inch because that's an inch and a half wide we'll do this eight inch four inches the middle so what do we say seven inches right so three and a half three and a half makes it seven okay a little bit out to make it basically like a rectangle okay you'll see where I'm going in a minute take it easy hang in there okay He's done. Okay, now what we're gonna do. <clears throat> we're gonna glue this piece right in here. Material fell on my back. Just like that. Okay, then towards the end right here, we're going to cut it into a little V, a V like that. Cut the center like that. Okay. 
a little bit of glue on the fiberboard. I'm using Masters All-Purpose Cement. It's pretty quick drying. So that's what we did. We cut the V right there. So we're just going to fold the material over on the fireboard now. Just like that. A little slide of that. <clears throat> and of course, hammer it down. Voila, that gave us a little pocket there for the zipper to go into. Going to duplicate that. So we got the piece cut out for the pocket somewhere around here. A little subliminal message. <laughs> Don't forget, all right? Thank you. Thank you. All right, where'd that piece go? <clears throat> All right, well, it's here somewhere. So I'm gonna take the zipper apart. We're gonna stitch that label into the new lining and then stitch everything back together. Let's continue. All right. So we've got the tag sewn in. Okay, you gotta do that before you stitch the pocket liner in. Now we're going to stitch the bottom seat, where are you? The bottom seam of the pocket. some glue on there already just to keep it in place and we're going to go ahead and stitch the side top the other side of the pocket <clears throat> first stitch I always lock it in the place I go back I stitch two forward and two back to the back and melt that down sucker is not going nowhere no sir now I'm sure there's other ways of doing it you know but that's, this is how I do it I'm sure I'll get a comment or two saying well you did this this way did that that way everybody does it differently end result is that we always try to make the customer happy. That's the most important thing. And she is done. Well, pocket is done anyway. Okay. Once again, the lines in the pocket lining and the outer piece here, they're all horizontal. They all match like they're supposed to. 
Oh, I've made mistakes before. Sometimes I twisted and turned. I was like, oh man, what did I do? All right, let's continue. All right. So, this is ready. Okay. Now, I put these in the corner here to reinforce it because that's kind of a structural spot that that was torn, it looked like. So, those, uh, those will reinforce the corners and make it better. Now, I've got a heavy cardboard cardstock. This is called a chipboard. Okay, this is for the bottom, bottom of the purse. The four holes are for the feet that are going to go on. So what I'll do is once I stitch this together, before I, obviously before I put the lining in, we're going to attach this and put the feet through, secure them from inside, put the lining in, stitch the top. All right, now we get to put nice brass feet on the bottom. What we're going to do is going to put a little bit of, this is basically Loctite, the devil should do it. This is, this is just basically to, so the screws don't come loose very easily while she uses it. Because if a screw comes loose and a foot falls off, okay, well, you've got to basically take, open the lining somewhere to get to the screw, okay, which is a lot of work just for one screw so adding this adding this to the to the whatchamacallit to the feet it won't um, it won't come loose very easily all right let's see if we can get this in here These might be a little short. I had some longer ones. I decided not to use that because it was just way too long. Let's see if this works. This screw is going to be long enough. I don't think it'll be all right. Just get that one tooth going. All right, plan B, I'm gonna go back to the longer screws. That might be too long, I might have to cut the darn thing. All right, let's continue. All right, got the feet in. Screws on the washers. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna cut a small piece of fabric. Maybe we should do it on leather. Ah, fabric will be all right. Basically, we're just going to put it on top of the screws. Okay, so what happens is that even though there's no sharp edges on the screws, over time that night that fabric rubbing against it will create a hole. I'm talking about this fabric here, the lining that's going to go in will create a hole. So basically, this is just kind of protecting that that um, area cool once it gets stuck in my fingers just little square pieces rectangle pieces now there are different feats that you can use that you can use on bags 
some of them are screwed on some of them are basically there's like um let me see if i can find one for you you know it's like it's like this here it's got two little prongs on it where it goes inside and it opens up like a like a little like a little v also there's kinds that you hammer together like a rivet almost these are these are pretty cool ones these are actually they're solid brass the rest are like brass plated or silver stuff like that silver plated now at this stage we are ready to put our lining into the bag and line up everything basically see these two these two pieces here are going to be stitched together just like that okay and then following the other end two pieces stitched together and same on the other side basically we're going to stitch from the bottom to the top across back to the other side the bottom and we're almost we're almost getting there with this project so as you can see it's coming it's coming together nice way all right let's continue subliminal message all right some coffee time all right i'm gonna take a little break just a couple of a uh, couple of minutes people ask me what kind of coffee i drink this is what i drink okay it's called Najar, N-A-J-J-A-R. This is a Brazilian ground coffee, okay, pure Brazilian ground coffee. It's um, it's a product of Lebanon, if I'm not mistaken, it is. And um, it has, there's a couple of different kinds that, that this company makes. This is the kind I like. So basically, it's, ba it's very basic. You got a little tea kettle, okay, or a coffee kettle, whatever you call it. But depending on how many people are going to drink, if you if it's one person, I usually put two cups of these because sometimes water evaporates. And the idea is you have to put one heaping spoon per person or per cup that you're going to be drinking. <clears throat> now this isn't a heaping spoon. I'm running out of coffee because it's almost empty. So I'm going to put two of them in there. It's going to pretend like it, it was one. Okay. If there's two people, if you want a stronger, you put two, two, you know, two teaspoons and so on. Three people, three teaspoons and so on and so on. And what you do is basically here now, you're just going to let start boiling. Once it starts boiling, it's going to start rising. You have to take it off the flame. You got to stir it, put it back. You do that a few times and it'll stop rising. It'll start percolating. Once it starts percolating, it's done. Okay. And that's it. That's all to. That's all there is to it. It's very fine powder. <clears throat> See if I can cut this open to show you. I mean, it is just fine, fine powder. Okay. Oh, might as well put it in here while we got this open. Oh. Now, I didn't drink, I didn't start drinking coffee until I was 35 years old. One of the regrets I have, not, you know, in my early 20s, before my dad passed away, not sitting down and having a cup of coffee with him, because he used to have it every morning when he woke up. And um, it's, it's more of a, like a tradition, right? You sit down, you talk, you know, you chit chat about your day. I know I don't have anybody with me today, but... I usually have some friends that come in. We have coffee in the morning. We talk about our day, what our plans are, where we're going, what's going on in our life. It's it's just it's just a. It's basically just sitting down and communicating, and and talking with your neighbors, with your friends to have coffee. So my dad used to drink it every morning, but I I never drank it in my teens and my twenties, my early thirties. When I went. Um, when I went overseas to meet my wife, 
you know, everybody drinks over there. Everybody drinks coffee like, like water. So first week I was there, I had 28 cups. So after that, I started to, you know, to get used to it and, and wanting to sit down and enjoy a little peace time by myself or with some friends. Yeah, it was like drinking mud basically in the beginning, but eh, you get used to it. Because everywhere you go, people go, hey, you want some coffee? I'm like, uh, yeah, all right, sure, of course, why not? Okay, so you can't say no. No, they, they, you can't. You can't say no. It's not. You can't say no because it's impolite to say no. To, you're a guest in their house, and they're offering you coffee, and you can't say no. You have to. You have to drink it. So I just kind of like, all right, I'll have number twenty-four. How the hell with it? Let's have number twenty-five. It's crazy, crazy. <clears throat> and that was almost, almost twenty years ago. So it makes me jittery, but that's okay. And no, I don't have Parkinson's disease, okay? Because I shake a lot. It's because of it's because of the coffee. All right, let's continue. It's coffee time. <laughs> but we gotta take a break now and then, don't we? You know, legend has it that they say that this coffee's so thick that it'll stand up a spoon if you put into it. I don't believe it. Should we try it? Let's try it. No way! <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> oh my god, it worked! <laughs> it worked! <laughs> oh my god, it is thick, isn't it? <laughs> Let's continue! Now what we're using is the post machine to stitch the side pieces on. A little easier to stitch this. The flatbed is going to be a little bit difficult to do. And once we stitch these together, I'm going to go ahead and sand this edges so it's nice and smooth and, and dye it black. Coffee break was fun. Slowly but surely. Nice. Looks like I have it hard enough. Okay, let's try it again. Let's try it again. Okay, not too bad. Getting there. All right, let's continue. All right, we're almost done. 
this is all the stuff that got replaced it's all vinyl well sorry the lining is vinyl not the exterior exterior is leather so we're going to get rid of these we don't need these anymore okay the last thing that that i'm going to do i'm going to apply some big four conditioner it's just just lotion for leather basically the company's name is Bickmore, B-I-C-K-M-O-R-E. Now, I have no vested interest in, in the company. I just like their product, so don't think I'm peddling their product because I'm getting paid for it. It's, um, it's a good conditioner. So, anyway, the company's name is Bickmore, and the product, this one, the conditioner is Bick4, the letter, uh, the number four a matter of just rubbing it in moisturizing the leather give it condition it up a little bit really the leather was not in bad shape the actual body of the bag you know it just needed some TLC majority of the stuff it was just kind of dismantled and and Really, it was kind of difficult, you know, to figure out what went where. <clears throat> it's a little bit of studying the bag over, and then um, you kind of figure it out. But the job gets a little bit harder if you have something that is taken apart already. Not by you, obviously, you know, and, and we're trying to put it back together. So overall, I think it turned out real good. I think she'll be very happy with it. Again, this will last her for, last her for many years to come. All right. So these go, these are the, basically the side strap holders. There you go the other way. I think the ball is supposed to be in the front. Like that. Yep. Alright. I'm going to condition the strap before I put it on there and I'll assemble it and I'll be back with my final thoughts. Let's continue. I have to confess, coffee wasn't that thick. I fooled you guys one more time. <laughs> I made this little contraption to put it in the coffee kettle. And the spoon went in there. <laughs> my coffee's coming back. That's what I get. Alright, well, I mean, the coffee can be that thick if you really put a lot into it, but, <laughs> but mine wasn't. Alright, I'm sorry about that. I had to tell you, my, my conscience wouldn't bear it. <laughs> Let's continue. Alright, welcome back. We are done with another project. Turn out pretty good. Cool. I'm happy with it. I think she'll be thrilled to have her bag back assembled. You know, I mean, things happen sometimes, right? With repair shops, who knows what happened with the other guy? And I really don't, it doesn't really matter, you know, but, um, but you got to be careful whenever you're taking on projects make sure you're qualified to do it you know um it's difficult sometimes right when you especially when you haven't taken the item apart but you have to get a good sense that 
Okay, you know what? I can do this once it's apart, put it back together. But who knows what happened in between with the other shop. But I think, uh, I think I'm very happy that finally finished it. And um, I think she'll be happy with it, that it's nice and assembled. And she can get many years of use out of it. Now, again, um, going back on the price. I mean, look, I've spent maybe, say maybe about a good six hours on there. Maybe a little more than six hours. So, I mean, if you break it down... That's not that much in, in hourly labor. Um, sometimes at, you know, at the beginning when I tell you the price, you may think that's a lot, but the time that I put into it and the detailed work that I go into, even at 500 is not that much to be honest with you because within that six hours time, I could have done 10 projects would have made me probably four, you know, four or five times more than, than what I charged for this one. But at some projects, that's what it takes. You know, it takes a little bit more effort and to get the final, you know, final product done. And then I really don't mind putting time and effort into it. I'm just trying to give you guys an idea to compare the time and the price and what I charge and what I put into it. So, you know what? I guess I don't have to justify it. I, I really don't because the customer would be is happy about it. And um, I iron all the details out with them at the beginning. And they they give me the green light, and then they get a finished product that they're happy with. Okay, thanks for joining me. I appreciate it. Did you guys like my subliminal messages once in a while? I did that. If you haven't subscribed, please do so, um, and um, give me a thumbs up, comment all you want, positive, negative. I'll take it all, but don't be nasty, okay? Don't be nasty with the comments. I've deleted some of the comments, and I blocked some of the guys who you know, who've left comments like that. Just be nice. That's all. It doesn't take much to be nice. You know, you can say what you want, but in a kind way, you can say it. Don't use nasty words on my, on my channel, please go, go, you know, troll on somebody else's channel and, um, you can have fun over there. All right. Anyway, thank you very much for watching me. I appreciate it again. And, um, we'll see you guys again on the next video. Take care.